Hey you guys, it's Brandy Chanel and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be your Bell Collective uh, episode 3 review. I know I missed episode 2, but nothing really went on in episode 2. But this episode is looking pretty good so far. So as I'm reviewing it, I'm um, also watching it. So when it comes to a commercial, then I come back and review it, right? So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it, okay? So the episode opens up with Tamara and her parents. Um, nothing really is going on. She's just talking to them about, you know, her career, but they really want to know about her, her love life and what she plans to do as far as having kids and the family. Um, her parents have been married for 51 years. Um, of course, Tamara is 40. So if she got married now, she still would not be able to reach that uh, goal. But, you know, um, it was good to see her interact with her parents. She says she's a parent's girl, not necessarily a, a mama's girl or a daddy's girl. She loves her parents and she is the youngest. So I wonder, you know, <laughs> how old are her, the rest of her uh, siblings? But, um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't a whole lot going on there. She was just visiting with her parents. So let's move on to um, Miss Antoinette and Latrice. So Miss Antoinette is checking out her space to where she wants to open up her dental practice, okay? And um, Latrice visits her. As soon as Latrice walk in and, she go, and they go to her confessional, she goes, there was no AC. It's really hot. Ain't a whole lot of floors. And I'm like, Latrice, girl, okay, you, like, this is my whole thing. It's, it, it, your dream starts, has to start somewhere, okay? You have to start somewhere. Of course, there is no fucking AC or no floors. It's at the beginning stages. Shit, it's barely a building. So how you expecting there to be, like, AC and all that other shit? So I was like, girl, hush, okay? Um, it wasn't a read, but it was like, it was some low key shade, but she said, you know, I see your vision. I got it. Okay. So then they get to talking about, um, <clears throat> they get to talking about what happened at Tamara's party. This is what I don't like. And this is what, this is where me and Antoinette's going to have an issue because she mentioned to Latrice that Letitia was shading her. And when they were talking, you know, she was talking about her wig was, you know, too far back, which it was, um, but if that conversation didn't go exactly that way, if I can remember correctly in last episode, you know, they Letitia and um and Antoinette were talking and Antoinette had kind of mentioned some of the shady shady shit that she had said about her brunch, about Letitia's brunch, talking about her waffles. And Letitia was like, no, that's okay, because I was talking about your wig you need to you need to get pulled down. So for Antoinette to bring that up and be like, you know, she was a shade me the whole time. No, girl, tell the whole story. You were shading her. So she gave so to your face, she told you what she was saying about you instead of doing it behind your back. So don't 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 do that. And then that's where me and Antoinette is gonna have an issue. She mentions that her and Latrice are shady. And this is what I know about this is what I'm seeing with Latrice and Antoinette. So they'll get together and they'll talk crap about the other people. They'll, you know, talk crap. And then when they get in front of the other women, they want to play the victim. And that's what I'm seeing with these two. When it's like, y'all talk all y'all shit, but then want to get so offended when the other women come for you. Now, Marie be on some other stuff. But to me, that was just crazy. And I was like, whatever. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't remember the, the Caucasian lady's name. I'm not going to say white. I'm going to say Caucasian friend's name. I don't know her name, but she asked me, like, what does it mean to be real? And Antoinette kind of brought it down. She's like, you know, for me and Latrice, it means being honest, being genuine for other people. It means, you know, um, just being downright rude. And I was like, okay, I, I understand that, um, that definition, I get that definition. However, you're not being genuine when you tell Latrice a whole different story about the conversation that happened between you and, and Letitia. So yeah, check, let's, yes, let's check ourselves. Let's police up ourselves first before we start checking everyone else. Um, let's go on to Miss, um, Miss Marie and them grandbabies, honey. So from what I'm seeing so far, Marie's oldest son ain't shit. He a, he a ain't shit in IGGA, okay? Um, her son is in school. And while her son is in school, she is supporting 
his three children. So at the, so in this scene, she's watching two out of the three children. Now, I don't know if all three of them kids is all is by different baby mamas, but we do know the two children that she is watching right now are with two different women. Okay. And she's watching them and she's basically explaining, you know, I do everything for them. She supports the baby and the baby mamas. And I'm just like, you doing too goddamn much. Like, I know she want her son to go to school and all that, but shit, he can, he can get a part-time job and pay for something. Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, I feel like she knows her, her son ain't shit, but because she wants him to make something out of, out of himself by going to college, she is carrying the burden of taking on his kids when that's really not her responsibility. That's his responsibility. So I get what she's doing, but she's cradling him at the same time. At this point, he's 21 years old. So yeah, he ain't grown, but that motherfucker, he grown. Okay. He was grown enough to make dumb decisions to make those babies. So he should be grown enough to take care of them. But I get what Maria's saying. She has... One of them is five months and the other one is one. So all three of them are under the age of like two or something like that. And it's like, so basically he's, he's had kids back to back to back. Okay. And I feel like Marie is going to stress herself out, trying to keep up with the, trying to keep up with these damn kids. Yeah. She got the, yeah, she got the money for it. But at the end of the day, like who's paying for her, her son to go to college. Like, I'm pretty sure she is. And that's crazy. Marie also mentioned that she's um, with her. She's with her husband, uh, Cedric, and they were married, divorced and married again. I, listen, I don't know why anybody would marry someone, divorce them and remarried and remarry them. I, I don't get that. Uh, I don't know whether, you know, they grew, you know, they got older. They realized they need each other. But honestly, there's a reason why you divert, divor divorce them the first time. And now get it in like to me, that's a waste of time. But, you know, it's her it's her marriage. It's her life. Um, She mentions that, you know, she like when the baby moms come over to pick up the kids or what have you, she is basically asking them, like, what's going on with her, with the communication between them and her son. And the baby mom's like, they don't even answer the phone. That nigga don't even answer the phone. I said the word, oh, whatever. That he don't answer the phone. So I'm like, he really is a deadbeat. He's an ain't shit. He's an ain't shit N-I-G-G, like, N-I-G-G-A. Like, for him not to answer the phone, like, communicate. Now, of course, I don't know what the conversations have been like in the past between him and the, um, and the baby's mamas, but for, for him not to pick up the phone while they're calling him about the baby is some trash ass shit to me. So they, they have no choice but to call Marie. And at some point, Marie is going to have to put her damn foot down and tell her son, listen, I didn't force you to have these kids and I didn't have these kids. So you're going to have to do what you need to do. And I hope whatever, um, whatever degree he's uh, planning on getting, I hope he finds a career that makes him enough money to take care of them damn kids. To already be 21 and to have three kids, that's just, it's just trifling. Um, But moving on, y'all, Latrice's husband is getting on my motherfucking nerve. Like, he is so ridiculous. Okay, so then the next scene, right, we at, um, Latrice is having a lunch with her business partner and they're discussing her new hair care line that's about to come out okay now in the previous episode just to give y'all a little preview because I, I didn't like I said I didn't review it right um Latrice's husband is supposed to be is investing in her her hair excuse me her hair care line okay at first it seems as if he wanted if he was going to invest that he wanted a say so in her business but Latrice let us know when she wanted to start this business, he wasn't supportive. So why should you have a say so now? Because when I first started, you didn't believe in me. You weren't supportive. You didn't do none of that. But now you see, you know, how it's grown. And you see, we pro we live in this way partly because of me, because we don't know what Cliff does. Okay. We don't know what Cliff does. So I'm pretty sure the way they live in is is part of is the way they're living now, their lifestyle is probably because of 
Latrice's business, okay? So now that you've seen what her business is doing, now you want to invest in it and be a part ownership in it. But no, 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 no. I'm glad Latrice talked him into... um just being a silent partner. No, you don't need no say so because you didn't want no say so back then. So you ain't going to get no say so now. Just give me the check and shut your mouth. So now we here at this lunch, right? And she's with her, her business partner. And this mug is upset because he didn't, she didn't let him know about the meeting, the business meeting, because he, he wants to say so. Now, hold, now I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. You supposed to be a silent partner. Why the fuck you need to know what, what I'm, how, how I'm discussing my business with my business partner? That makes no sense. Listen, y'all women, y'all better learn from Mary J. Blige and Wendy Williams, okay? These men, if they ain't got shit by the time you meet them, then you need to let, let their ass go. Don't be making them part of your shit, okay? Because they take advantage and start using it to control you, okay? He, the, my whole thing is what you, what you want your, why do you want a part of my business that you didn't even believe in in the first place? So then he could walk up in there in the restaurant talking about something. He furious. How y'all gonna have... A discussion without me. Motherfucker, it's my business. I've been having discussions without you. What you need to have a discussion for? And then her business partner shows her the logo for their um for the products. The logo they're the logo they're gonna use for the products. And he said, Well, how y'all just going motherfucker, you are a silent investor. You silent, okay? Why do you want a part of this now? What just, it's just, I promise you, it's just a way to control Latrice and have control over everything. That's one of the downfalls of marrying somebody older, a lot older than you. Because even though I don't mind women marrying older men, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to weigh the pros and the cons and see what what you're willing to deal with because honestly that's how older men you know that's how they think sometimes they want to be your daddy you they want to be your husband and your daddy and and your your manager and your business partner no motherfucker this is my shit okay let me do my own thing you got don't you have a job okay go go over there i don't come over your job and tell you how to run it you're not gonna come over here and tell me how to run my business if you agree to being a silent investor you need to be silent y'all better learn from wendy williams and uh mary j blige <laughs> okay so we have marie meeting up with letitia i love um Letitia and Marie's friendship. Sometimes I think Letitia is like she can calm Marie down. Like, you know, she can she can bring Marie back down to earth because Marie can fly off the handle sometimes. And I think that's the role Letitia plays in um Marie's life. They get to talking about Marie's son. So like I said before, we we're realizing that Marie's son ain't really shit. That's what we, that's what we knowing that he ain't really shit. And she know her son ain't shit. So this, this little boy has decided to basically go to a school three hours away from where he's supposed to be from his kids, basically. And his mom is having a disagreement about that. This is at the end of the day, this little boy is trying to run from his responsibilities and his mama know it. And at this point, I don't think. I really don't think anything can really help him, but for Marie to just be like, I'm done with you. Like I'm done supporting your kids. Either you support them or you, or you better find a way because he is taking advantage of the situation with Marie. She he's taking advantage of Marie taking, uh, taking responsibility for his kids. And so he can go off and do whatever the hell he want to do. So he going to go off to this college for that's three hours away and make another damn baby that she's going to have to raise. And I think it's ridiculous. So this mug come in the house. He's all, you know, upset. He packing up a TV that he didn't pay for. And Latrice is basically telling him, like, if you going to leave three hours, get your all your stuff, all your shit and get out. This mug is this little boy, not mug, little boy, because he is a little boy, starts getting upset, getting mad because his mom told him to get out because she's no longer taking any of her, any of his crap. And, you know, he wrote, he get, he 
kind of rolls up on Marie, but the, the his, her one of her grandsons getting the um getting the um get in front of her is like no daddy or whatever. So he ends up hitting a wall, punching the wall and putting a hole in one of Marie's walls, and then putting two more holes in her walls throughout her house. And Marie um shows Letitia um his so she let Letitia hears the um recording that she had took of her son. And the reason why she took this recording is because for whatever reason, her kids always call her dad and her dad is always like you I guess her dad is always getting on her about what she say to her own kids which to me is out of order okay because at the end of the day she's the mom and they're the kids so whatever she says goes okay but the audacity of this little boy to get mad cuss out his mama and put holes in her wall after she is taking care of your kids and your responsibility, motherfucker, how dare you? How motherfucking dare you? Okay, you brought these kids into the world and she taking care of them and you cussing her out and rolling up on her. You got me fucked up. And I'm, you know, to me, it's something else going on. I don't know what is like. Letitia said anger is passed down a generation to generation. So you can kind of see how Marie gets upset over things like that she gets very upset over small petty stuff but i can see why she's doing why she's getting like that and why she is like that she got so much shit going on at home so coupled with trying to open up another location for her her business that could put stress on anybody and alter your attitude and i mean at this point I'm with Letitia. She do need to have a conversation with her son, but but the conversation need to go like this, okay? I'm not taking care of your motherfucking kids. You obviously have no respect for me. You obviously don't appreciate what it is I do for you. So here, how about this? You are solely responsible for taking care of those damn kids that you created, not me. Okay? And you, I would tell them, baby mamas, don't call me. Call him because he is the daddy unfortunately they may have to just take care of the damn kids they self since they decided to have a child with an ain't shit ass nigga who that little boy got on my nerve okay y'all moving on to the next scene uh is letitia and tam are going to city council to, to speak on the vision of a uh, fair street okay this was a really positive scene not a whole lot going on in this scene but it was um it's very positive because now we can see the beginning stages of how letitia is going to bring fair street back okay and she got the okay from the councilman she got his support so i can't wait to see what comes out of this uh, conversation. She was very emotional about it. So I'm very happy for Tisha because, you know, I know this is something that she wants to do. So it's very positive, very positive. So I'm glad in this episode we're getting some drama, but we're also getting some positive, you know, some positive content. And I, I really do enjoy that. So moving on to Latrice and her husband at the pool. Um, so Latrice wants to make her husband feel wanted because he was upset about the lunch that he wasn't invited to when she was talking to her her business partner about her business i i don't know why women i don't know as why as women do we do that like when he didn't support you in your business or you know was you know behind you or when he when you were trying to get your business off the ground and he wasn't supporting you did he come back and make you feel wanted and supported and say, I, and say, I apologize, babe, for not sticking by you while you were getting your business off the ground? I apologize, babe, for not supporting you when you got your business off the ground. Did he make you feel wanted? I highly doubt it. OK, but you going to make like, I don't know why it's when we do that. It just it irks my nerve. Why you why do you have to make him feel wanted about a business that he didn't even support in the first place? Like, OK, girl. So, you know, um, they at the pool and, you know, 
she tell Cliff to take off his shirt and she, you know what? At least she was honest <laughs> because most of the time I think when some women and not all women, but some women, when they choose to date and marry older men is because they have daddy issues. Right. And so they looking for them, a daddy, you know, to replace the one they never had. So uh, at least she was honest about it. And she said that belly, you know, is, it does something to her and that, you know, something about that just made me like real sick to my stomach. Like girl, like he looked like he used to be fine back in the day. But now when I look at him, he not an ugly man, but he just, he just, he an old man, like he just an old fucking man. But, um, I ain't mad at it. Okay. You know, to each his own. Right. Um, so then, you know, Latrice revealed that she, when she was younger, her brother threw her in the pool and she almost drowned and they, you know, her husband trying to teach her how to swim or whatever. He ain't really teaching her correctly. She went to get her like a little paper, a little paper bag, a little plastic bag or whatever to cover her hair up. Cause you know, she said she from the hood. She ain't got no um swimming cap. So I, I completely, well, I'm, I'm not from the hood, but I completely, um, can relate to that. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how she thinks she going to drown. That shit ain't but three feet of water. Like, <laughs> like you're not going to drown, but I get it. It's childhood drama. I guess child. Okay, y'all. So the next scene is Latrice, uh, not Latrice, um, Marie is get, gathering everyone together, including her business partner and friend, Essie, to speak with her son about what just happened, the, the little confrontation they had between one another. Before Essie gets there, um, Marie is having a conversation with her husband, Cedric, okay? And Marie tells us that prior to... Her and her husband get married. They both kept separate. They they had their own place. So Cedric has his own place, and she has his and she has her own place. And I guess the house they live in is the house they live in together. The problem is, <laughs> Cedric has a past has a past of cheating. Right. The reason why they got divorced the first time is because of his infidelity so i don't know why in the hell would you marry this man again and then he's showing you the same pattern of behavior that he was showing you when y'all was married the first time okay now this man is marie is going through all this crap at home with her son this man is disappearing you know to his he he's staying over this place, you know, he's staying over a friend's house. He don't come home certain nights, certain uh nights, and she don't hear from him until the next day. That shit, like, honestly, to me, them getting remarried was very dumb because I don't if he wasn't faithful before nine times out of ten, he's not gonna be faithful now. How much y'all wanna bet when he goes off spinning, you know, and he don't when he don't come home, how much y'all wanna bet he's out with another woman? Like, and then, and then I think Marie knows this because she's, it was smart for her not to make him part of her business. But at the end of the day, it shows that she does not trust him. So why in the world would you go back to marry him? And then they got a daughter together. So and to me, I don't know. Marie has a very dominant personality. Like, I, I don't see her letting Cedric be the man in the relationship and I don't he seems very passive he just seemed like oh I mean in this episode this last little part he seems very passive he just wants Marie to take control over everything and he's not taking his part as the man and I think that gets very annoying to Marie because she's having to do so much. She's the man and the fucking woman in the relationship, okay? She having to deal with her ain't shit ass son on top of her ain't shit ass husband. And then she got a, her own business that she's trying to get off the ground that she's trying to grow. And the men around her are failing her. You have her daddy who is who her son's called so he can criticize her about being a mother. You got her husband who is cheating on her and, you know, disrespecting her. And you got her son that is taking advantage of her and disrespecting her. I mean, I like at this point, I know that I, I knew I wasn't, 
I I thought I wasn't going to like Marie, but I see what's going on. I see that the reason she lashes out is because of all the shit she got going on in her personal life. The men around her are failing her. Okay. And now you have her friend coming in. Now her friend was supposed to be the mediator. Now this is where I got to give Marie the side eye because part of the problem in her marriage is she's letting her, her, her friend, you know, in, into too much of her business. Now I get it. That's her friend, but that's her business partner. But she was completely out of line to be like, you know, half of what's going on in Marie's life is going on in my life. No girl, we got our own life. Like I'm, I wonder who's Essie's husband and what what her family got going on. Cause is is Marie part of that? So I was like, no. I just like I, I feel like Marie wants Essie around because she feel like she needs somebody to have her back. And because no one in her family has her back, you know, she doing every fucking thing, but nobody in her family has her back. And Essie does. But I think Essie is too involved. Like I get it. They're both in mental health. So she called her in as a mediator. So it helps that she has a friend who was also in the same um, career field as she's in. So she can help, you know, with family situations like this, but she's too involved. Like she's too involved in her business. So yeah, I, I didn't, um, she's too involved. Yeah. Okay. So the son walks in, right. And you know, they all sit down and they're having a conversation with Essie. Essie is in the room. She ain't really say much, but, um, she was supposed to be there to mediate. I don't, I didn't really see her mediate, but okay, whatever. So the son walks in. They sit down and having a conversation and immediately Marie starts crying and she starts, you know, she in her confessional, she says, you know, she made the mistake of giving her boys too much. And, I, you know, I, I'm not a parent, but I understand wanting to give your children the world. And one thing my mom did growing up is she gave me and my brothers a lot because she didn't have it growing up. So I get it. But I also see what she's saying and like, don't give your kids everything because you, they always, they have no appreciation. They grow up expecting you to just give, give, give and not getting it on their own. And I think that's what Marie is at with her son. Cause every time he do something, she write damn there. And you know, she starts crying. She's very emotional. She tells him, no, the way you talked to me was disrespectful. You know, I'm paying for you to go to school. I'm paying for your traffic tickets, violations, and I'm doing all this for you. And you can't even clue me in on your decision for school. And we also find out that her son plays basketball and he, I guess, hurt himself last season. He was supposed to set out a season, condition, take care of himself and take care of his kids, but he didn't do that so it's just, right now I just think what her son is doing is rebelling but I don't know what the fuck for he's had everything given to him so I don't what he's rebelling for I don't know um they get to talking uh eventually her son apologizes I thought it was a real dry apology what irked my nerves that her husband was like um you know, you were wrong, but I appreciate you coming here today and apologizing. That's not good enough. I mean, I need for you to tell him, no, the next time you do this shit, you're not going to be allowed in this house. And I think that is where Marie is having her issue with her husband, Cliff. Like he's just not, he's not taking his rightful place as the man. And I don't know what, whether he's doing that because, you know, Marie has such a dominant personality, but he's just so damn passive. And it's like, Marie is just like, well, damn, like, I, I mean, what the fuck I need you for? Hell, I, like I said before, she is the man and the woman in the goddamn relationship. He just sitting there looking pretty. So I, I can see that, but for him to kind of just, oh, but I appreciate you coming here and apologizing. No, he don't get, he don't get kudos for doing what he was supposed to do. At the very least, a little motherfucker can apologize to a mother who's still taking care of him at 21. Paying for this motherfucker's traffic violations and, and all three of his damn kids, the least he can do is apologize. After he broke her walls in her, in her house that she had to, that she worked to earn. 
Whew, yeah, this this was a good episode, you guys. Um, it wasn't. It was drama, but it wasn't drama in like the fighting amongst the women. It was drama to see. I, I'm I'm curious now about Marie's life. I am. And I hope she can get it together with her son. It looked like they're going to therapy. Her son agreed to go to family therapy. And they're going to, it looks like they're going to family therapy next episode. So I really can't wait to see it. So y'all let me know down in the comments section how y'all feel about it. Do y'all feel like, you know, the reason why Marie lashes out on the ladies is because of what she got going on at home? Do you feel like, you know... She needs to stop giving her son's kids so much. Do you feel like her husband is is really passive and don't take his role as the man in the relationship? Just let me know how y'all feel down in the comments below. Um, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe to my channel. You all have a great day.